friends, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to go full on booktube. I haven't done a video like this ever, but I've been seeing so many other people do videos and I was thinking to myself, I kind of want to do one too, and I thought, why not? It's part of the cozy content a little bit and we're going to implement some other things to make it a little bit cozier. And yes, I do talk about books quite often, but I would consider myself more of a cozy content creator than a booktuber because of all the other cozy stuff like sitting in a park or making cookies and all the other fun things. And books and cozy just go hand in hand. So I may not be a full on booktuber, but I just wanted to do this video because I thought it'd be fun. And it's the mid-year freak out book tag. And I have a hard time saying that every single time, but I really, really wanted to do this because one, I, I've been reading quite a few books this year. It's not because I'm pushing myself. I'm just, I'm just in a reading mood this year. I feel nice and cozy on the sofa and just want to keep reading. So I've just gotten in the mood of doing that. That ends up making me pick up more and more books. Um, with that being said, I've also been keeping a book journal, and if you watched one of my videos at the very beginning of this year, I talked about a book journal and keeping track of the books I'm reading, and that's what I've been doing in this book. And I thought to myself, well, if I'm doing kind of the mid-year freak-out book tag, then I can also update you on how my bingo list is going or how my A through Z books are going, and that's going terribly. I definitely need your help with that. And then I would go over the 13 questions that are part of the book tag freak out situation. And yeah, I, I was going to try to draw, and I tried doing that actually. And I could not concentrate on drawing my books because if, you, if you've seen my channel or you've seen my book journal before, I draw the covers for each of the books so that way I don't have to print them out. And it's just kind of a fun little artsy thing for me to do. But I can't draw and talk at the same time. I, I, I tried so hard, but I was just not getting anything done. But I thought I would show a couple little drawings as I talk about some of the books that I've recorded previously and then talk about just some books I really loved and then the bingo and the 13 questions. So I hope that's okay with you guys because I think it's gonna be fun. And then I can recommend you some books that I think are doing really, really great and really wonderful. And I think you should read. So let's go ahead and start with the 13 questions. And then we can go ahead and end with our book journal. But I'm gonna use my book journal to look through my books because this is the main reason I kept it. I have a hard time memorizing or remembering the books I've read and what I thought about them. I know that sounds terrible, but my brain just, I got too much stuff in here that I have to sometimes keep it down here. That being said, I, I'm gonna look through my book journal to help me answer some of the questions here, and this will help me a ton to keep my mind kind of focused on the questions at hand. We're gonna start. So question number one, and I'm gonna also list all the questions here, so you can go ahead, if you want to, you can answer one or two or three or all of them if you want to down in the comments below, or maybe you agree with me or disagree with me, and it's easy if you can have like a number to reference if you want to agree or disagree. We're gonna start with question number one, and I have a list on my phone here, so please don't get offended. I'm just looking at the questions. <laughs> Question number one is, best book you've read so far in 2024? And I have had the luck to read a lot of really good books this year. I was really surprised. Like I said, this is probably the best year I've done reading just because I've been picking up books after book after book. And so I've read more this year than I probably have over the last couple years. And I'm so happy with how this year's going so far. I've, I've really read some amazing books, but the one book that popped into my brain as soon as I read that question was Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune, and I loved that book. It brought tears to my eyes. It made me laugh. It made me fall in love with the characters. I, I truly just loved that book so much, and it made me want to go out and buy all of TJ Klune's books. And there are a couple of that I've seen recommended. I think Cerulean Sea, there's a book called Cerulean Sea. It's really popular. I just can't think of the whole title off the top of my head. And I have questioned if I wanted to read it because it was so popular and I didn't want to get my hopes up and then, you know, be disappointed. But now I have to read it. I have to read every book TJ Klune has written because they're just so beautifully written. And the character descriptions, the character growth, the atmosphere, everything in Under the Whispering Door just 
won my heart. So if you haven't read that one, I highly recommend it. It's about a man who ends up dying. We Don't worry, I'm not spoiling you because it happens at the very beginning of the book. And we follow him into this limbo the, between life and death. And his limbo is a cute, adorable tea shop that I would love to visit. And it's run by a wonderful man who's helping ghosts kind of come to terms with their death and move on to the next. And he doesn't know what the next is. The ghosts don't know what the next is. Nobody knows what the next is until you go. And it's very moving and interesting. And we end up getting introduced to other characters, other ghosts, and we see the character growth with all of these characters. And it's just really moving and wonderful. We start with this man who you're questioning if you're going to like him. I'm, I'm a character reader, so if I don't like the character, it's going to mess with me the whole book. And I questioned if I was going to like this character. And by the end of this book, I loved this character. So again, TJ Klune, Under the Whispering Door, 100% recommend my favorite book so far this year. Next question, question number two, is best sequel you've read so far of 2024? And that is a very difficult question to answer. So I haven't read very many sequels this year. I <laughs> have not been on my su sequel journey. I've technically read sequels, but they're manga sequels. Like I've read the next book in Witch Hat Atelier. I've read the next book in, technically I read Tokyo Ghost 1 and 2, but those are both graphic novels. So I technically read the, the sequel of Tokyo Ghost and I highly recommend that. I absolutely love Tokyo Ghost. It's about a man and a woman who are madly in love with each other but live in this world that's been taken over by technology and technology just lives everywhere. We have it in our glasses, we have it in our hearts, we have it in our brains. We are just packed with technology and it's all around us and they're just trying to find a way out but he is in the technology, like literally in the technology and she is wanting to find more and happiness. And so we follow the relationship between these two, but also the relationship in this very dystopian world. Um, very good, made me cry, fell in love, but I'm not gonna count that as my, my uh, sequel, even though I just recommended it. I'm not counting it as my sequel. And I think the only sequel I've actually read this year so far that I can call a sequel sequel of a book book, even though I do say graphic novels and mangas are books, but novel in the sense of novel, I would have to say Bookshop and Bone Dust. And it's not that I didn't love Bookshop and Bone Dust. I really did. I really liked Bookshop and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. But I loved Legends and Lattes more, and it's just because I'm a baker girl. If I could own a bakery and have a little library connected to it, I would. And it's normally the other way around. People would love to own a bookshop and a little tiny, like, cafe in there. I would love to own the most beautiful cafe and then have books that people can pick up and look at and read inside the cafe. That's, that's my dream, and that's, that's the goal in my life. And Legends and Lattes were, was focused more on that dream. Bookshop and Bone Dust is a cute little bookshop, and I loved it. I thought it was a really great book. It's the prequel, so it's technically not even not a sequel, but it came, it came after this book. So it's the prequel to Legends and Lattes, and it's so cute. We end up meeting Liv before she wanted to open the cafe, and we follow her journey of becoming a bounty hunter, getting trained to become a bounty hunter. But at the very beginning of the story, she ends up getting injured and has to go to this town to heal. And she's sitting in this town, she's bored, she doesn't know what to do, she, she wants to go out and fight and earn money and, and do the, the bounty hunter things bounty hunters do. And she ends up trying to find a way to entertain herself. And she walks into this musky, kind of dingy, not cute bookshop and gets to know the owner. And during that time, during her recovery, she ends up meeting other people in the town. It's very cute, very sweet. And we see the relationships again, building between characters. And if you haven't noticed, I'm a character driven reader, as I had mentioned. <laughs> so she, she ends up meeting other characters inside this town and it's wonderful to see their growth and their, their friendships kind of 
expand in this story and don't worry we still get some action so if you're if you're like a cozy reader but like some action this would be the perfect book for you because we have this wonderful cozy atmosphere plus some action and it's fun and it's entertaining and it's a cute book so i highly recommend that one just because it's a cute cozy book you can read it any time of the year so it's not like a fall cozy it's like a all year round cozy and so i highly recommend that one and i also recommend legends and lattes yeah <laughs> all right the next question is question number three of course and that is new release you haven't read yet but want to this is kind of a difficult question to answer, not because I have too many, but, well, I actually do have too many, but I had a list, I started a list at the very beginning of this year of 12 books that I want to read in 2024 that are being released in 2024. And if you saw that video, you've heard which books I want to talk about. I'll go ahead and post that video down in the description below because I, I talk about the synopsis of each of these books. But I have 12 books that I want to read. I've read one, two, three, four, five, and I'm currently working on the sixth one. So I have six more books to read. So I have Martyr by Kaveh Akbar. I'm going to pop all the images up here, of course, like I've been doing, but just so you know. I have Splinters by Leslie Jameson. I have Until August by Gabriela Garcia Marquez. The Morning Side by Tay Albright. Table for Two by Omar Towles. And The Strange Eventful History by Claire Musad. So I have a couple books that I've currently bought and this is part of a current project that I would love to finish before the end of the year. So hard question because I have some like requirements even though they're not I don't have to read them it's just goals for me. It's it's what I would like to do if I'm talking about books that aren't on this list that I would like to read that are m most recent releases. There's a ton of them of course of course there's a ton of them. It's really hard following a bunch of booktubers on YouTube and not creating a TBR list. That's the length of from the moon and back. I really hope my TBR is not that long. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you know what I mean? It's just really hard to keep track of that TBR list. So it's really hard to answer. However, I just read a book that's called, I have to look at the name, All That's Left in the World by Eric Brown. And he just released a sequel to All That's Left in the World, and I can't remember the name. I'll pop it up here. And I really, really would love to read this book. It just got released, I think, two months ago. I freaking adore All That's Left in the World. I fell in love with Jamie and Andrew. I'll talk about this book a little bit later, but I, I would 100% read that sequel in a heartbeat, but I haven't gotten it yet, and I have to purchase it. I have to order it. I have to go find it, but that one's on my I need to read list. So I guess to answer your question, your question, to answer the freak out challenge question, I have six books that I should read. I have one book that I really want to read and that's the sequel of All That's Left in the World. That was a really long answer for a very simple answer, I guess. <laughs> question next, I can't remember, I think it's four. Uh, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. This one was also kind of difficult for me to answer because I wasn't really keeping track of what books were going to come out because I already have enough books that I have that I should be reading first. Any, any person who likes reading knows this problem. But there are two books I found while watching other people's mid-year freakout book tag. And I'm going to list the creators down in the description below who talked about these books. But I ended up purchasing the quickly off of Amazon because I couldn't find them anywhere else. And getting some books here um, can be kind of difficult. So, so, so unfortunately, I have to go through Amazon for some books. And let me go ahead and look at the names real fast. So the first book I ordered was Open Throat by Henry Hoke. I only bought this book, only bought this book because it's about a queer leopard. I believe it's a leopard or mountain lion, mountain lion. It, so I'll just read the first like paragraph of the synopsis. A queer and dangerously hungry mountain lion lives in the drought de devastated land under the Hollywood sign overlooking the city that hu humans call LA. And it's spelled E-L-L-A-Y. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna keep reading. Lonely and fascinated by humanity's foibles, the lion spends 
their days grappling with the complexities of their own identity and ultimately the question, do they want to eat a person or become one? Well, that sounds fascinating, doesn't it? So I ended up buying this book very quickly. I actually think I went directly onto Amazon and purchased it. It doesn't get here until the middle of July. And I purchased it immediately after the creator started talking about it. I don't remember their name. I'm going to go ahead and list it so you can see who talked about it, so you can see who I'm talking about in the description below. Um, and then the next person, there was another creator who mentioned another book, and that's Smother Moss by Elisa Ellering. This looks so interesting, and it sounded... At first, I questioned if I'd be interested in reading this book, but then I heard the creator like mention the last like sentence in the synopsis and I thought oh my goodness I have to pick up this book all she said was for the mountain has powers and there's dead and alive rabbits and drawn inked creatures I have no idea where this is going I just fascinated me immediately and we're actually going to a cabin in the woods in the fall to kind of get away and relax and I thought this book would be perfect so it's from my understanding it's about two sisters it's about crime and it's about a magic mountain. That's all I have from it. It sounds fascinating. I was curious. And I think it's going to be absolutely perfect for this fall. And perfect for like a cabin in the woods. Um, hopefully it's not scary. <laughs> but I think it's going to be really, really great. So I picked up that one. I also love the cover. And that's also another reason I bought these two books. Is the covers of both of these books are super amazing. So to answer the question. Those two books are on my list but just because I immediately bought both of them after the creators started talking about them. And now they're on my list and what I'm looking forward to reading for the second half of this year. And they're both kind of weird and different and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've also read a ton of books this year about, or from the animal perspective, like Remarkably Bright Creatures, um, Summon the Keeper. There's a couple others that I've read. They're from the animal's perspective. And so, so I thought, why not just add another one to, from, from the animal's perspective? Next question, so this video doesn't get too long. So next question is question number five, and that's biggest disappointment. Um, I, I don't like to downgrade books because unfortunately they're just like maybe they're just not my type and other people have really loved them but I guess I guess there's one book and I DNF this book but there's possible there's a possibility I would go back to this book in the future I just DNF'd it because it wasn't meeting the standard that's that's the wrong wording it wasn't meeting what I was expecting at the time and I was expecting kind of a crime horror uncomfortable book and the book's devil house sorry by John Darnell and I was expecting a horror book that's true horror like scary book because I was just looking forward to reading a horror book for some reason and um, I, I like horror books but it was in the middle of the summer so it's just kind of funny but I wasn't expecting this book to be written how it was I guess and it's almost like short stories in the same world but I felt like I had to get to know the characters or get to know the story over and over and over again. And I wasn't, I wasn't looking for that. I was looking for something that was just going to make me like go under the covers and be scared. And I wasn't getting that from this book. So unfortunately, I think that was the biggest disappointment. But because I just wasn't ready to read the book and I wasn't expecting what I was reading and it wasn't meeting what I needed at the moment. So... It's a biggest disappointment, but I'm not getting rid of this book. I'm not saying DNF, never reading it again. I'm just saying DNF, maybe read another time um, when I'm ready for it. And now that I have an understanding of what the book is about and how it's written, maybe I could find a time where I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I can read that book. So that's, that's to answer that question. <laughs> uh, next question is favorite new author, debut or new to you? And this is an interesting question because I've actually read a lot of new authors this year, as you can imagine, because I haven't, like, I've read in my lifetime and I've read books over the years, but this year I've just been reading a ton of new books and I pick up books kind of randomly. I do that a lot at secondhand shops. I'll just pick up a book because of the cover or because the synopsis sounds interesting. I don't generally go for um, authors. So if I find an author I like, like 
TJ Klune, I'll buy all their books, but I won't um, go seeking out for an author if I'm just like at a secondhand shop or just out willy nilly finding books. So to answer your question, I have quite a few favorite authors I've found so far. And I think I'm going to cheat a little bit on this one because I haven't technically finished this book, but I've started it and I am loving the writing in this, this novel. It's Real Americans by Rachel Kwong. This book is written so beautifully. I'm, I'm just flabbergasted by how wonderfully and sh like beautifully structured and how it flows and how I feel like I'm connected to the story itself. It's, it's truly wonderful. It's truly beautiful. And I'm in shock with how much I've been enjoying reading this. It's one of those books where I've been reading a little bit slower because the writing just pulls me in. Like I, I just am in love with this writing. So I actually don't know if Rachel Kwong has any other books. If they do, I would definitely go buy them and read them. And if they don't, I'm going to keep them on my watch list to make sure I read everything they put out in the future. Because Real Americans, if you haven't picked it up, it's it's really written in a way where I'm just like, wow, what in the world? I'm, I'm in just wow. <laughs> so Rachel Kwong is definitely a very wonderful writer. I love their style and I'm looking forward to reading more from them. But to be honest, there are so many wonderful authors I've read like Salman Rushdie, Ocean Vong, um, Tanya Huff, Breathwaite, Oyenkan Breathwaite, Clarence Lispector, Sharon Karun Ateliaka. There's just there's just so many wonderful new authors I've read from this year and I'm really, really excited to continue finding new authors and reading debut novels and also reading original novels. That's one of the things I really do love about reading is just having the adventure and and excitement of experiencing so many different authors writing styles and it's just so much fun so i've i have had the luck to just fall in love with so many different writing styles this year so long story short though there's a lot of them but currently the one i'm reading uh is i think it's because i'm currently reading it so i'm, a, I'm cheating a little bit but uh rachel kwong is whew, wonderful next question is going to be biggest surprise that is Summon the Keeper by Tanya Huff. I picked this book up randomly at a secondhand shop and I bought it just because of the cover because I thought the cover was so cool looking and then the back of it talked about a talking cat and I was like, yep, I'm sold. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. This book was so funny, so entertaining. I laughed so much and there's two other books in this series and I'm looking forward to buying them so much. I'm, I have to find them because I can't find them online. Well, I could find them in the US but I can't find them here. And I just think they sound so fun. And Summon the Keeper is about a woman who, her job is to close holes between earth and hell. And she gets called to this Airbnb and she's required to close the hole, but for some reason there's some complications and she's unable to close it, meaning she can't leave. And we end up meeting some funky, inappropriate ghosts that are just maybe not, maybe not appropriate for um life <laughs> and then we end up meeting some retired greek gods who are sexist and weird and and full of spunk we get to we just get to meet so many characters and the cat is just fantastic he's sassy he's wonderful and he sleeps all day long and he does whatever he wants and it's just absolutely wonderful so summon the keeper was definitely a surprise and i love it i thought it was so funny and so well written and i'm really looking forward to reading the next two the next question is book that made you happy wow that's a difficult question I have read a lot of books that have made me sad. Um, not because they're terrible, but because they've just had a lot of emotion. Oh, Remarkably Bright Creatures by Sh uh, Shelley Van Pelt. That, that book made me happy. I think that book was just so sweetly done. We follow an octopus who lives in an aquarium and he follows the journey of this older woman who works as the cleaning lady in the aquarium. And we follow 
we follow the octopus's opinions and his findings and just just his we just follow an octopus in everything he does and it's it's really delightfully funny and cute but what ends up being so sweet is it ends up being kind of a drama and we follow an older woman who's just kind of sad in life and trying to kind of move forward. We follow a young man who's lost. We follow an octopus who's also lost. So we get to follow these three characters who are just trying to kind of find some sort of conclusion or not conclusion, but some sort of next. And it's just a very sweet story. I loved the ending. The ending was so well done. And so this that book made me happy because of the ending. It was sad somewhat throughout it, but the ending, absolutely perfect, wonderfully done. Next question is newest fictional crush. I don't have a crush on any of the characters I've read, and I don't think I could. I answered this question on somebody else's video because she asked at the very end of the video who's a fictional crush that I or her audience would have, and every book I've read this year, I can't think of one character I've read about and thought, oh, I could, I could have a crush on them. I, I think they're, they would be fun to be around and be with. And that's because I've read some very weird characters, like regarding the husbands, she ends up having like 200 some odd husbands and I'm not into any of them. There's, they're just, it's just a mess. Um, the Seven Moons of Mali Amida. Uh, no, I'm okay. I don't think I'm his type. <laughs> Days at the Murashaki Bookshop. I don't think I'm her type. And it's also getting to know this character in a different way. My sister, the serial killer. I definitely am not wanting to be with her. There are some risks to being with her. Um, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't think I have any crushes. I don't think I read any books that would encourage me to have any crushes. I can see why the characters I have have crushes on the people they're interacting with in the books, but I don't. I, I definitely don't. Or like Under the Whispering Door, I'm not their type, so I'm not going to do anything about that. But it's cute. I like it. It's fun. It's cute. And, and I like the question. It's just, I can't. I can't answer that question, unfortunately. However, can you answer the question? Do you have any, um, maybe you can answer it for me by giving your answer down below. <laughs> Do you have any fictional crushes that you've read about this year? Do you have any like characters that you found were cute or would love to meet in person or anything like that? I'm, I'm, I would like your answer maybe. Maybe you can answer it for me. Our next question is going to be question number 10, which is newest favorite character. And this one is two characters for me. It's Jamie and Andrew from All That's Left in the World by Eric Brown. I love these two characters. They're so wonderfully compatible and cute and communicative and wonderful. We have these two characters who meet each other by happenstance at post-apocalypse. So we have like 98% of the world that's died and there's only a few human beings left and these two end up meeting on happenstance and they end up kind of adventuring through the East Coast together, trying to kind of find different things or figure out what's next in life. And we follow their relationship from friendship and seeing how they communicate and seeing how they just work so well together. And I loved how they worked together. I think it was not just the favorite character, but it was the favorite character com combination between the two. Because I loved the fact that I saw a healthy, healthy relationship in a romance. And this, the fact that they were able to communicate about their problems, like if somebody was hurt or somebody was going through something, it wasn't like this back and forth of anger and frustration and hatred and love. And it's just not my type of romance. I know a lot of people love it. Uh, good on you. I think that's great. But for me, this book was represented so much about communication and working together and understanding when somebody needs a little bit of space. And it was just very lovely. So Jamie and Andrew, just my favorite character combination. Blah. Yeah. Question number 11. Book That Made You Cry, The Women by Kristen Hanna. 
That book made me cry multiple times. I cried so much during that book, but that I think I think that I think I ended up crying within the first hundred pages, and then again, and then again, and then again. Like, it's so so good, and I highly recommend it. I love anything written by Kristen Hanna. She's one of my favorite authors, and this is just one of those books that pulls your heart and rips it out and makes you cry. <laughs> so she. Kristen Hanna writes about a young woman who decides to become a nurse and be a nurse in the Viet- during the Vietnam War. So she gets sent to Vietnam to care for the soldiers over there. And that's like the first half of the story. But then we follow her story of her getting back and being told multiple times that women were in Vietnam. She doesn't understand the pain that the soldiers went through. She doesn't deserve help. She doesn't need help. And we follow her her suffering and her pain and her loss and just all of this raw emotion. And it's truly difficult to read, but it's so well done. And I highly recommend this one, especially if you like reading historical fictions. This is a very well written one and a very interesting one. And I think the fact that this is my first historical fiction that's based during the Vietnam War definitely made a difference for me because I learned so much from the novel as well and it encouraged me to look up even more about it so definitely made me cry I bawled like a baby and I feel no shame about it (laughs) we're almost done with the, the questions I promise the next question is question number 12 most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received um That's kind of difficult because I can't, I get books mixed up quite often of when I bought them or when I would have received them. I don't remember if I got them like this year or in October. Like, for example, I know my Grimm Fairy Tales complete collection I got in October, but I love that cover. But that one doesn't count because I got it in October. Little Women, I think I got it in December. November or December and I love that cover it's also absolutely gorgeous but I think I got it last year I should have figured this one out before I I started talking hmm I think this is quite difficult to answer you know what I I bought this book just because of the cover and that's actually all that's left in the world by Eric Brown I think this cover is so beautiful and so interesting and definitely very different from some of the other covers I've seen and it pulled me in and wanted me to read it and I think because it has that graphic novel type of feel to it and it's just very sweet and colorful and wonderful looking and the second book also has a wonderful cover so I'm looking forward to reading that but I'm going to say that book because I know I bought it last month and I know it's beautiful. So. I'm going to keep it short, say that book, and we can move on to question number 13, which I believe is our last question. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, a lot of them. (laughs) Unfortunately, a lot of them. And that's not because of... This is a great segue. I need to read a lot of them because if I want to finish some of my goals that I have in my bullet journal, I need to read some other books and I think you guys can help me figure out what some of those books are so we're going to kind of shift so I can talk to you about my bullet journal and show you what I've been working on or show you what I've worked on and then you can kind of help me out figure out which books I need to read before the end of the year because I think that would be more fun than me trying to figure out what I need to read I would rather you tell me what I need to read (laughs) so let's go ahead and do a little shift and then um, 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 I'll meet you back in like two seconds for you. Okay, I hope you can see this okay. So I have all of the ones I've completed already in this like tan outline and all the ones I haven't completed, not outlined, of course. And I've ri- listed down the ones I've completed and then also put the numbers in the corresponding ones just so I can see which books I've read corresponding to which books or which squares I've done. Long story short, I'm keeping track of everything. And there's a couple things on here that I don't have an answer for. So for example, the book published by a South Korean author, I already have like a couple books that I would love to read that have been recommended to me that I already have for this one. 
I have a banned book in the American school system. I don't have a book with a purple cover, so maybe you have an idea of what a book with a purple cover would be. Books seen on TikTok or Instagram. I do not have this one. I have so many books that I've read from YouTube because I watch a lot of YouTube book recommendation videos. <laughs> and so maybe you have an idea of a book that is maybe seen on TikTok or Instagram. Feel free to send them to me on my Instagram. I'll put it I'll put it down here. <laughs> so you can go ahead and send me some books. Maybe you've seen some other TikTokers or Instagrammers talking about books that you can send to me. I would love to hear your recommendations or see some recommendations, I guess. A, a title starts with the letter Z. No idea. I have no idea how to solve this one. So if you have an idea, I would love to hear it. I have a book that's Pirates or Set at the Sea. It's about tea. <laughs> books about poems. I'm currently reading Ocean Vong. I also got a book for my birthday of poems of E.E. E. Cummings, and I'm really excited to read that because a lot of my favorite poems are from E.E. E. Cummings. I don't have a book released in the year I was born, which was 1993, so if you have an idea of a book that was released that year that's good, I would love to hear recommendations. I have a book. I'm going to read Little Women, so a classic you have never read. I'm going to read Little Women this year. Really excited to read that. A book chosen blindfolded. I have not done that, and I don't think you can help me with that, <laughs> but I do need to do that. A book with a number in the title. I don't have an idea for that one either, so any recommendations for that? I have a couple manga series I'm currently working on, like Spy X Family and Witch Hat Atelier. I'm planning on finishing one of those, at least, hopefully. And a book from my childhood, I currently have Sophie's World, and I'm looking forward to reading that one as well. So there's a couple on here that I need help with. So if you have any ideas for any of those, those that would be wonderfully, wonderfully wonderful. <laughs> and I need a lot of help with my alphabet. This is an A through Z tracking page. I'm trying to read at least one title A through Z in this year. I've gotten quite a few done, but there are some letters like F, I, J, K, L, N, O, Q, V, X, Y, and Z that I have not completed. And that book that starts with the letter Z can work for this and that. I'm, I, they can both go back and forth because they're just goals of trying to complete some of these books. So if you have any ideas or recommendations for books that um, would fill these areas, that would be absolutely lovely. So I think I'm about halfway done with my alphabet. I'm about halfway done with my bingo. And then I would love to fill this out. Again, these are all goals. They're not like requirements for me, but they're just like encouragements of me trying to do new reading challenges or see what else is out there or explore new, new authors or titles or information. And maybe this would be kind of fun to do in authors next year as well to kind of see if I can do A through Z in authors. This is just my 12 books for the year tracking. Maybe if you're quick, you can see how I'm feeling about my 12 books so far. And then here is how I track how many books I've read so far this year. And then on here, I just have a tracking of all the books I've read, how many pages, how many stars I've given them, and just kind of keeping a track of the books I'm reading. Because sometimes I don't get to this until a week or two later. So it's nice to put them here so I don't forget I've, I've read them and then also initial thought about them. So yeah, that's the bullet journal, and I hope that's interesting for you guys. There are some pictures on here that are somewhat pretty and somewhat not pretty. This is just a quick glance about some of the books I've read, so if you're quick, you can see some of them. Um, I, draw the, I drew this one yesterday, and it was so hard. This is some in the keeper. It is not lovely, but you know what? I love it. It's, it's what I needed. My cat looks like it's terrified. Look how terrified that cat looks. But truly lovely. I find the bullet journal so nice and so perfect for when I want to keep come back and talk about books like I've done with this with this freak out mid-year freak out book tag. It's been so easy to be able to flip through here and just talk about my books. It's not a lot of details, but it's enough for me to be able to go back and see how I felt and um see how I, I liked reading. So that's the bullet journal and that's how I've been able to keep track of everything and that's why I was able to answer some of these questions um, about my books. I'm going to transfer you back so I can talk to you instead having you over my shoulder. So give me one second. Is that better?
Okay, that's a little bit better. We'll, we'll, we'll make this work. So I've talked a lot and I do apologize, but I hope this was interesting for you. I hope you found some new wonderful book recommendations or some book cautions. <laughs> Maybe you like the ones I may have not loved or felt a little disappointed in, but I think it's always fun to see what other people are reading. And I wanted to do this mid-year freak out book tag because it was really nice to kind of just hear how other people's reading years have gone so far and what they've been reading, what they've been enjoying, what they recommend for the rest of the year or maybe next year. And I thought I would love to share these with you guys as well. I, I don't always have a ton of book content. I do it here and there. And I love my 30 book recommendations in June video collection, but I thought this would be really fun to kind of just be like, hey, it's the middle of the year. Let's see how we're doing. Let's do an update on the bullet journal. Let's do an update on, on reading. And I would love to hear how things are going on your end. Are you a big reader? If not, completely okay. Maybe you can tell me about some of the books you've read, or maybe if you've just read one, what did you read? Did you enjoy it? Are you having fun? Um, or maybe you would like to get more into reading and I would be happy to give you some like, let's get back into reading book recommendations. But if you want to answer any of these questions, I would love to hear your answers. Like, who's your fictional crush? Who are you into in this book world? Or maybe you can help me answer some books that I need to read over the next six months. So. I really appreciate you guys. I really appreciate your time and everything that you you bring to me because you bring me so much joy and happiness, especially if I see your comments below. They just bring me they just bring me so much happiness because I love talking to you guys. It's it's just a lot of fun. And you guys are my 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 online crew and I really enjoy it. Um yeah. I will let you go. This has been a long enough video. I hope you found something from this. And if you guys did like this video, go ahead and let me know. Give it a thumbs up. It helps me know what I need to make in the future. And I also created a poll on the community list. If you want to go on there, it asks like what kind of content you would love to see more from me. So books or recipes or cozy content, more of the same or completely other. I would just love to hear your opinions because then I can kind of, I can then create content that better fits your wants. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Oh, and subscribe if you haven't, because then you can hang out with me and other people. And that's pretty cool, isn't it? So I'll leave you there. Until next time, you guys, I hope you have a fantastic day, a wonderful, wonderful weekend, if it is your weekend. And I can't wait to see you guys till next time. Oh, and congrats, you found a surprise video. This was not planned. This is just random Saturday content that I've put put together and there'll be a new video on Thursday. Until next time you guys, I again, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys soon. Ciao!